Hello and welcome to another episode of the Choose Strong Podcast. I am particularly very excited about today's podcast because as you can see, if you are watching us on the YouTube, uh, Eddie and I are sitting next to each other. And you might be thinking right now that we're going back to our old ways, sitting side by side as using the sunlight as our light and watching that go down. How many episodes do we have of that where the Too light many. changed just because the sun Too was setting? <laughs> we had no lighting. But we are sitting side by side because directly in front of us are some of my best friends and um, people that are just so dear and near to my heart. And I cannot wait to introduce them to you. Um, but before we do that, as always, Eddie, we like to um, acknowledge everyone that has just started their run, yes. their training. We have people that just got in their car to either go to or from work. Um, and they're thinking right now, like, you know what? I want to hang out with my friends today, my besties, Eddie and Sally. And so why not see uh, what they're going to be talking about today? So thank you for choosing our podcast to listen to because we – we love this community. We love you. And we hope that whatever it is that you hear on the podcast today, you'll, li you'll leave feeling a little bit more encouraged. As always, we like to acknowledge our youth listeners. And Eddie, I feel like with every passing episode, you're getting more and more messages about the kids that are listening mm -hmm. to this episode, which is probably also a good time to let our guests know that uh, we do keep things PG. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, we do. Why are they leaving? Why are they now <laughs> leaving, exiting the room? <laughs> to our youth listeners, you kiddos that are hanging out with mom and dad right now in the car, if you're on your way to practice, um, we hope that you have a strong training day. If you're on your way to school, have a great day. Remember, you get to choose to be strong each and every day. Don't forget that you are strong. And Eddie and I are always rooting for you. Yep, we all, yeah. Yeah, we all are. Right. I'm going to get right into it. Let's get got, right into yeah, it. We got yeah. stuff to do today and we've got <laughs> guests to interview. So I'm going to highlight Miss Steph Newcomb. She on the YouTube, actually, she gave the, the podcast a little love and I want to read what she said. She said, literally, literally, this episode was the best. I feel like I'm listening to friends prank each other and have fun <laughs> talking about training and life. The intro had me cracking up. Thank you for being real and uncensored. Really, it's so refreshing and amazing. It's what keeps me coming back time and time again. Who is that? Steph? Steph. Thank you, Steph, for the Steph, kindness. Yeah. Um, I just want, I would like to know who she thinks is like the winner. Of the um, pranking? Of the pranking. I'm trying to remember what was the prank. <laughs> well, uh, that's probably on Valentine's Day when I gave you the card. Oh, yeah. That I said, right. Right. I gave Eddie a card that said... Um, it was me thanking him for, for making breakfast for making breakfast for me for a year in bed. Straight. Every, that was my present. Yes, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Which hasn't yeah, that's, happened yet. That's that has not happened really yet. Really weird. It will not happen. <laughs> so Steph, thank you for uh, for sending that in. All right. The the next thing I want I wanted to highlight. Uh, we like to highlight strong body, strong love, strong mind, um, in the way that that's uh, personified. And I got a message here from Ria on Instagram um, says, Hey, Sally and Eddie, I stumbled upon your podcast recently and I'm absolutely loving it. I'm not much of a runner, but I'm starting to, but I competitive and competitively power lift. I'm also a medical student. One more year till I'm a doctor and powerlifting prep was kicking my butt a few weeks ago. I started listening to your podcast during this time and it totally flipped my mindset to do the work. Right now I'm doing my clinical rotations in the hospital. So I have about 12 hour days, five times a week board studying when I get home, and then I find time to uh, train for powerlifting. Prep was hard, but I just kept listening to your podcast episodes on my way to the hospital every day, and it just fired me up to finish my prep strong. I had my power powerlifting meet this Saturday, and I won my division. Mm. At about 181 pounds, my body weight, I lifted a total of 859 pounds. I squatted 325, benched 176, and I deadlifted 355. Thank you for leading by example and for creating such a great podcast. Strong body is right. Strong body, Rhea. Oh my goodness. That and is impressive. strong mind. To put in 12 hour days yeah. and study and lift. Rhea, I am incredibly Pretty proud of you. It's impressive, but so proud of you for choosing strong. Thank you for sharing that story with us. As always, these are the things that really encourage Eddie and I 
um, in what we do. And thank you for being a, a part of the community. Yes. So shout out to Rhea. Thank you for, for sharing that. All right. That's all I got. Let, let's introduce our yes. guest now. I'm very excited about this. I mean, I don't know if I should just have you guys start talking and then people guess who you are. But again, mm. you're, if you're watching on YouTube, you're going to see their faces. So um, to our audience, may I introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Billy and Hillary Yang. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, guys? Yeah. <laughs> See, I got to say that um, almost a year ago now at their wedding. I got to introduce you guys, so I just oh thought God. I'd open with that. But thanks for being here, you guys. <laughs> So good to be here. <laughs> <laughs> all ours. You do know that our names will probably be in the description, or are you just gonna have them be? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Yes. Question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> See, and here we go. We are starting off on the right foot. Uh, I think a lot of our listeners know Billy and I have been friends for a long time. I often refer to him as my brother from another mother. Um, we've been on so many awesome adventures, created a lot of good content yeah. over the years. Um, and he introduced me to the wonderful Hillary, who has changed my life in so many different ways and has been like a sister to me. And they so kindly asked me to officiate their wedding. Um, last May, and I mean, let's be honest, that was a highlight of your life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know Mackenzie and Isaiah are up there, and maybe your own, own marriage, but yeah, that, that had to be like a one B or a two A. <laughs> definitely, I mean, definitely. On. I've never done anything like that ever. Um, but I do. Before we dive into all things tangents, because I, I know that's what a lot of this conversation is going to be. Mm -hmm. I would just love to give some really basic intros about the both of you because we do have a, a lot of people that are brand new to the podcast and not everyone that listens to our podcast is in the running community mm. and so um people are gonna be brand new to who you guys are and what it is that you do so hillary i'm gonna start with you um i think <laughs> one thing that eddie particularly loves about you is that you are canadian Let's go. so <laughs> we got the canadian family right here yep. <laughs> yep. the yep. mccrays are canadian um hillary born and raised where were you born and raised Give us like kind of the basics of where you grew up, what you do. Oh man, uh, grew up in a small town outside of Vancouver, a couple hours east of Vancouver, on a farm. Uh, we had a very idyllic childhood. We were beekeepers. And my parents had this dream to have a farm, but they didn't have a ton of money. So they bought this farm with their best friends who had five kids and we had four kids. And we all lived in this big house together. And we just stuck a wall up in the middle and called it two houses. Um, and we were homeschooled and we ran around all day and just like made up the craziest stories. And like we had nine kids so we could do whatever we wanted. And like so it was awesome. super fun. That's so cool. yeah, basically that was that was my childhood was just like being outside a ton, using my imagination. We didn't really watch TV as a family. So it was very much like get outside, be creative. Like, yeah. And, and the best. wow, that like it's neat to hear where you started because what you do today is like kind of runs in the same vein. You are outside exploring and um, totally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like upgraded. We used to have this like really old point and shoot like video camera and we would make these elaborate stories up and we would like reenact movies like the whole thing and it's funny thinking about that because i'm like it's kind of kind of where i started right and like yeah. upgraded That's equipment awesome. slightly but the idea of just like telling stories and being creative and like macgyvering all of it you know <laughs> like we would have capes made out of bed sheets running around <laughs> like gladiators and like it was like hilarious that. so yeah lots of lots of imagination lots of love lots of just being creative and flexible and i think have basically my life now so nothing yeah. really changed yeah absolutely so Hillary was at the Grand Slam with me she was at, at the 200s I'd always see her like perched up on a rock or suddenly she'd like come out of a forest with a camera and it was the highlight of the race for me like you found me at some really low points too um, but just to see we had some good hugs we had some really good hugs <laughs> It was like this little beacon of light on, on the trail. So um, tell us what you're passionate about doing. And this is why you were actually out on the out on the trails in the Grand Slam. It wasn't that you were out there running the race, but. Yeah, well, it's 
So I've been involved in kind of media and ultra running for seven or eight years now. And then the last five years, I really got into the 200 mile distances, um, started by photographing them. And then I kind of took on the job of media producer for Destination Trail 200s. And that's um, just like being a really cool thing. I mentored other photographers into that world that had never shot those races before. Like logistically, they're a lot of work. Like they're a lot of work to run them, (laughs) as you know, but they're a ton of work to figure out like where the runners are going to be, time the photographs so you're getting the sunset and sunrise and you're not out there in the middle of the night when the runners are coming by. Make sure that everyone's sleeping, like they're huge courses. So kind of the logistics of that I thought were really interesting Mm -hmm. um, to try to tell the stories. And it's something that I really enjoyed. So I actually... Up until December, that's what I was doing for most of my time, and now I'm kind of moving on to my own creative things. But yeah, it's it, it has been a huge part of my life for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So having a camera in your hand has been. I mean, how long have you been doing that? Oh, like like actually yeah, shooting and maybe you eight, have, you have nine some years. Award winning shots <laughs> that we that we know about, and your work is beautiful. If, if you guys want to see some of her work, she did design my whole website. Um, yep. that's it's, yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, you're a woman of many talents. Um, but where does camera fall into all of this? It's wrapped up in, in what you love to do. and Yeah, well, it's yeah. wrapped up in my love of ultra running. Like, I've been running ultras for over 10 years now. And when I started, I just started noticing that there wasn't a lot of women that were also, like, photographing them. And I had friends that were guys that were doing it. And I kind of thought, like, we need more women out here. Mm-hmm. And I think the reason was, first of all, there's not as many women in ultra running. Yeah. And then you kind of extrapolate that to media. And it's like, it's heavy. It's physical. It's a lot of work to run with the camera. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like seven pounds in my hand, plus whatever you're carrying with you. So I kind of saw it as this challenge to be able to do both things and just started bringing a camera with me on all my runs. I'm totally self-taught, like learned everything on YouTube. It's the best, you know, like I love that it's this open forum. You can have all this knowledge. And for me, it was just like, I want to capture the places I'm going. I want to like show people what I love about being out here. Mm -hmm. And my phone just wasn't doing it justice, you know, like Mm -hmm. it's so sad. You're standing there with your iPhone. You're like, it's not the same, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And so that's where it started. And, you know, I was working a full time job. I was in the corporate world. I had the nine to five and the government pension. And it was like very comfortable for someone in their 20s. And I was um, just starting to do the photography on the side. And then it got to the point where like every spare second I had, I was off on trips or traveling or going to races and just kind of got to the point where I was like I think the nine to five balance here is off you know like I think I'm doing this in the wrong order and um, went back to school I went to to art school and did a year of graphic design and so that's where the whole like website and everything comes in Mm -hmm. is I wanted to be able to put together more skills and kind of be able to set myself up to be like my own business and that was seven years ago, and I've been working for myself ever since, and yeah. still awesome. here. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I love that's one of the things that has also brought both you guys together. So, Billy, um, when I first met you, when I, I like I I knew of you through this website called LA Runner, which we talked about this on yeah. <laughs> on our last podcast. Yeah. And I still remember some of your, you know, self-filmed, uh, like, vlog style with the little cannon, yeah. point and shoot, these, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> these shaky <laughs> films of where, you know, like, where that started. I, le- I mean, I love the where we all start, right? Yeah. Um, before we even hit record on this podcast, we were talking about where this podcast started, how, how we grow and grow and grow and how things change. But, um and I, I know I'm jumping ahead of myself. I'm going to talk about how you guys met. But I'd love just for the audience, for you to talk a little bit about what you are passionate about doing as it relates to the camera and, and kind of stuff that you're working on right now. Yeah, well, uh, I think my impetus in, in coming into this space was just to find a little more meaning beyond running for a time, which is mm-hmm. what I, you know, like I think everyone can relate to when you get into road marathons, you're chasing that BQ or you're chasing that personal best. And after a while, it just kind of felt like, I don't know, it didn't feel very meaningful. It was just a punching in, punching out kind of thing. And then, um, and then I found the trail and ultra running community and I was like, Oh, like, I think I found my people. Like Mm -hmm. if you, you know, not to date myself, but (laughs) if if you remember that blind melon 
video of no rain <laughs> yes. and that little bee finds <laughs> yes. the other bees and they start dancing and frolicking and that's kind of like what how I felt when I found my people and and then from there it just you know I, I became immersed in the community but then yeah there was a dearth of storytelling there was a dearth of like in, inspiring stories of how people ended up at the start line you know not necessarily the finish line but at the start line like what got you here and um and, and as somebody with a very convoluted story on how I ended up at the start line of an ultra marathon, which I like a younger version of me, you know, decades ago would be like, are you freaking kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> you a distance runner, not only a distance runner, but running 50 Ks to a hundred miles, like get yeah. the heck out of here. <laughs> I didn't lead a very meaningful existence until I found the sport. And then, so I wanted to share a little bit of that. Like what, what is it about some of these people that, you know, it's behind them putting on a bib and running these insane distances. And I think Sally was, Sally's story was one of the first stories that I really decided to tell in longer form. And, um, you know, like, I think both of us can attest to our lives kind of being irreparably changed from that point on. Yeah. A lot of things happened about a decade ago and mm. mostly for the, for the better. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the crazy life that I lead now is like, yeah, I'm, I'm an active participant still, knock on wood. I love the sport. I love being out in nature for long periods of time, exploring new mountains. But also I love telling stories about all the people that toe the line. So that's what I've been blessed to do mm -hmm. as an extension of LA Runner. <laughs> I know. It's so wild. Well, I, I feel like any time I travel to events, you know, even on until – present day i mean you are brought up all the time your films are not only iconic but you truly are one of the best in in the endurance film making i mean you're an, a very talented storyteller I, I think it's hard to teach that you know you can't always go to school and learn how to literally um pull your heart out yeah. and then insert that into your work and i think that's something you're really good at doing you feel and ever since I've known you, you've told me repeatedly, I don't always like my greatest work and the work that I lean toward is stuff that I'm passionate about. It's stuff that I have interest in. It's stuff that I believe in. Mm. Um, I mean, I think in every field, we all have to do stuff to, you know, get the bills paid and we, we pick up projects and we do things to, but you've always stuck with the, of doing what you really love. Yeah. And I think... What is so cool about that is both of you guys have stuff to doing what you love, and that's how you guys ended up meeting, right? Yeah, I mm -hmm. think it's a, <laughs> it's a common philosophy that we share, and not just the stories that we tell, but in how we live our lives, and um, it, it very much connects us. I mean, you can say this a lot more eloquently than I can, <laughs> but you know, our North Star, for the most part, remains the same, which is just lead a meaningful life, lead an authentic life, and lead a life that is worthy of existing, I guess, you know, just like not only tell a good story, but like live a good story. And I think that's kind of uh, at the heart of what life is about for both of us. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of crazy. And so like, I guess a little recap into how we met and, and all of that, but uh, I was in LA in 2019 uh, for a little like girls running relay trip. We called Run Chella because it was the same weekend as Coachella. And we ran across <laughs> Joshua Tree, Mojave Desert, and Death Valley, and super just like cool community like of women. And I was in LA afterwards to see one of my friends, and Billy hosted another community event. He hosted a like Earth Day clean, like trail cleanup day the in Griffith or, Park. Yeah, yeah I know. Um, trash pickup. Yeah. That's <laughs> how I tell the story. Um, <laughs> His face. This is why we no, have like, a Get YouTube. it right. Get it right. <laughs> uh, oh, I think it evolved from like, yeah, he organized some like community trail cleanup. Like, oh, okay. I failed again. Like a bunch of people on probation with like white, like orange jumpsuits <laughs> making up trash. Come on, man. Service hours, but I don't mention yeah. that part. I had a shotgun. Go on, go on. Like that, picking up trash. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Billy, Billy hosted this lovely community day. Sana and I went out 
Um, and it was just kind of cool because I, I didn't really know who Billy was, I have to say. And I was Shocking. Short, I know. Yeah. I live under a rock in Vancouver. Yeah. I did at the time. <laughs> but I think we just started chatting and realized like how similar our lives were. Like we're both creatives doing these things and in very similar spaces. And it was like, oh, my gosh, like you're also kind of living this life. And uh, just like one of these cool connections, we stayed in touch. Billy had plans to come up to Vancouver and visit me at the beginning of 2020. He was going to run Chuck and 50K in Washington and then come up. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. Like, you know, one of these things where you're like, I really don't know him very well, but who knows, right? Like you kind of get these inklings in life. And I was like, he seems like a cool person. And then March of 2020, like a week before he was supposed to come up, was when COVID hit and the border closed. Mm. And it was just like, you know, um, and just like crazy lifetiming because at the time it seemed so frustrating. It was just like all these things were conspiring against like not just us meeting and hanging out, but just like life, everything mm. came to such a standstill. And that whole year, I think, I felt so powerless to kind of, you know, all these plans I'd made like for my whole life and projects and everything, everything disappeared. And so it was very much like a reset for me. And I know for Billy as well. And we talked a few times over the year just about like how we were doing. Cause I think for creatives, especially like all of us were reeling, you know, like mm -hmm. our whole lives are community and people and yeah. congregating and all this. And it was just mm -hmm. gone. And I think that that hit me really hard, hit Billy really hard. And we ended up reconnecting 2021 when the border reopened and I just like I needed to go see people you know like I was just dying for community and uh, Hard Rock that year actually I did the designs for their awards and stuff and and I was like that's a perfect chance to go down and just like be around people I've never been to Hard Rock before I'm gonna go down there by myself just like took some camping gear and I ran into Billy like about five minutes after I got into Silver Silverton <laughs> and it's like this tiny like one street town and it was just so crazy. It was like I saw him walking down the street and I'm like, I didn't even know he was going to be here. Like we yeah. hadn't coordinated that at all. We both were just like drawn to community and um, yeah, we, we started like we, we camped together. We were like, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? Yeah. Let, let's hang out. And then that very quickly evolved into just like spending time together and you know at the end of that trip Billy was like well how about instead of flying home to Vancouver you go on a road trip with me to California mm -hmm. and I think just because of COVID and everything that we'd been through I really had this attitude of like I'm gonna live so intentionally I'm gonna seize every opportunity and we both had that and we're just like let's let's go for it and mm -hmm. you know on paper it seemed kind of crazy like we're both long distance Vancouver to LA like you know on what it seemed like there were so many obstacles on one hand but on the other hand I think maybe because of all the time and everything that had happened we just realized how precious these mm -hmm. moments of joy are when you find them mm -hmm. you know like and if you find them you need to hold on to them and you need to sometimes just make them happen mm -hmm. and we were going back and forth with all the COVID testing every like I would sit <laughs> in the airport before my flight to come down and visit Billy not sure if I was going to get on the flight because they would make you do the test in the airport and every time I'd be sitting there like I have all these <laughs> hopes and dreams and I don't know if I can get on the plane. Yeah. And it was so wild to like just surrender control of, of everything, but also know like very quickly what we both wanted. And so, hmm. yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's informed our whole relationship and our lives in a sense, because it's really made us so intentional. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so how, does, how does that work with you guys? Because you guys both love the camera. Do you guys feel like you work in the same way with like, because I know Bill, you're you're a storyteller, filmmaker at heart. You're, mm -hmm. but you you also do a lot of other things. I mean, you're a great public speaker, a commentator. I mean, you do stuff at races, you do appearances, you have a podcast. Um, you know, and and Hillary, I know you amazing at design. You're you also speak um, pictures. I mean, I can see how your talents absolutely. Uh, like benefit one yeah, another, complement one another. I, I feel like she, uh, much like in life, kind of compliments <laughs> me in in all the things that I'm either bad at or don't like doing. Right. <laughs> right. You and I talked about this. And that's how it is in my life. Too. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Hillary and Eddie, like, yeah. Billy and Sally. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> no, and I had no idea. Even uh, just this past week, we we're at this very social, uh, like, brand event, and. Hillary, I got I got uh, Hillary an invite too to come along to help film it, but 
it was probably mainly to be my <laughs> like <laughs> to be social for Billy. Yeah, because <laughs> I I don't know. Like being social is uh, I I categorize myself as an extroverted introvert. Mm. I can do it for a little bit, but then after a while, my battery levels go down. Yeah. And, and you need to go run in the mountains. But he also yeah. hates small talk. He's really bad at small yeah. talk. And yeah. his eyes just like glaze, yeah. <laughs> which I love about Billy because he cuts right to the real talk. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, that's how we. That's like how we became good friends. Yeah. Exactly. I was like, oh, good. Someone else doesn't want to talk about the weather. and like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, literally the second time we met. <laughs> I knew before, your whole life story. Yeah. <laughs> We went on a night run and we just like told each other everything. Uh, not the yeah. not the happiest topics, but it I was know. Like part of our journey to get there. And it was like, oh, yeah. okay, I guess we just fast track that relationship. I love that though. Like running for me, some of my most meaningful friendships are made on trails because you're oh, so raw yeah. and you're so vulnerable. You're like, I have no filter. I'm just gonna right? mm. verbal diarrhea and everything. no interruptions. Like, yeah, we have nothing to interrupt you. Yeah, yeah, what is it that we get so vulnerable when we're running? We just get more and more you tired. No ex- we're like, all the defenses start to slowly go down. <laughs> I think it's also something about, I don't know if they did a study of this or not, but I, I think there's something to be said about like not making eye contact, not like yes, sitting across Yes, I read someone. that study. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and it's just more about, I don't know, you're in this beautiful environment and mm-hmm. um, it feels meaningful, so you want the conversation to be meaningful. Yeah. So uh, I, that's not to say, like, I don't spew you know bs from time to time but like <laughs> for the most part it, they are like meaningful relationships and they are it's a good way to connect with people and also have business meetings sometimes yeah you know? like, mm-hmm. absolutely a, yeah that's my golf Eddie. yeah that's your golf. <laughs> yeah this show is sponsored by better help one of the relationships that i am most proud of in my life is the relationship i have with eddie james mccray and i'll tell you what A common misconception about strong relationships is that they have to be easy to be right. You know, sometimes the best relationships happen when both people choose to put in the work to make them great. And I believe therapy can be a great place to work through the challenges you face in all of your relationships, whether with friends, work, your significant other, or anyone. In past experience, I have found that therapy is helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. It isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma or have major challenges in life. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit betterhelp.com slash choose strong today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash choose strong so you guys you guys go to events together but you'll operate like you're not doing the exact same job and when you're at home you're not doing we're like a venn diagram thing. we overlap in the middle yeah okay that's a good way to put it yeah yeah, yeah like yeah. i mean this event this week like i filmed billy he was on camera that was sort of our roles um but roles reverse for other things that we're doing um we'll work on videos together where i'll help him with some of the graphics or animations or you know, he'll be helping me film things. Like, we really have a good balance, I think. She'll take beautiful photos and, yeah. you know, share those. And, yeah, I think there's a, a lot of ways that we complement each other and, and much like you guys. Yeah. So. Well, when it's you were cool. building my website, I remember you like, oh, wait, I think Billy has a clip of this. I'll ask him for the mm-hmm. video on this. I took the picture, and I was like, oh, that's so yeah. cool how they both are able to contribute. Can to I, very convenient. Work. Sorry, yeah, that's um, cool. <laughs> not to pivot away from us, but I do think that <laughs> – Seeing how well the two of you guys work together has been super inspiring. Just oh, from a, you. from a building up your own brand and, and you know working for yourself kind of thing. Because I've known Sa- some of my biggest frustrations with Sally is that <laughs> it, it's it. hard it, for yeah. her to focus <laughs> and, on like really? each individual thing. <laughs> but but yet you like, and I are <laughs> very similar in that too. Yeah. <laughs> it's so weird. Billy no. is so organized. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But to <laughs> yeah, see no, everything, right. she's, <laughs> all these ideas that she's had, to actually get it 
directed in the right place and yeah. to have somebody like you and I know like I, I I'm just like I think more people should know about like the intricacies of your guys' story because what you guys <laughs> built, especially in the last couple of years, mm. I mean, it feels kind of overnight, but as somebody who's been there for the past decade, I can tell you it's not, but Sally's <laughs> idea about the book and about, you know, like films and, and content and all that stuff has been like percolating, percolating within her, but it's just, it needed an outlet. It needed that organization business acumen, needed an Eddie. <laughs> organization needed to Eddie. get it structured. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, well, yeah, and it's like just as a as a really good friend, witnessing like all your successes, especially in the last couple of years, has been I, I, like my heart is just full and big, and like I'm so proud of you. And mm -hmm. I don't know how if I've said that. I, this is <laughs> yeah. I'm, I, I'm a, kind of uncomfortable with like you know being sincere sometimes, but it, it really is. Like it's been amazing to see your growth and your reach and just like seeing people come up to you and you know you giving them big old <laughs> hugs and and you could just tell they it means something to them like you're really connecting and touching people so even with this podcast too so i just wanted to kind of publicly put that out there That's because so it's been mm -hmm. It's been really inspiring to watch. Oh, Billy boy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I feel like, yeah, you and I have been friends for so long. Very, one of my dearest friends. And I think you have seen the, the ups and downs and <laughs> Billy dearest, <laughs> Billy dearest. Yeah. Um, you know that you're my really good friend when we can go to bat really hard too. And then <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we are honest and challenge each other. Yeah. And I think that's, that's why we're great friends. And yeah. I owe a lot of, the risks that I take to you saying buckle up and put your big girl pants on and just go for it. So I, I've always appreciated that about you. And I think that one of the things that I've, I've, as I've gotten older, I understand. And I said this when you guys all came over was at the end of every year, I understand the best part of my year is always the people. It's, it's my inner circle. It's my family. It's those close friends that I do life with. It's like the real relationships, like what I have with you guys. And I feel like that is, that's also why I've been able to accomplish things. It's not because I'm amazingly talented. It's because I have some really amazing people around me. And, you know, Eddie was a teacher for so long and I would try to tease him to come and, and work alongside me. But man, when it did finally, it, you know, when it finally clicked into place, it was like, wow, like this is actually how we're all supposed to do life. Like mm -hmm. we need each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It isn't just some people are shining stars and their life's going to be great and they're going to be successful and everything do is great. It's like, no, like it is, we all need each other. And yeah, some people are going to be out in front sometimes, but man, they have a whole army of people that are, are doing work alongside them too. And, and I think that's what's so great about having different personalities. Like half the time, 90% of the time, he wants to be back behind a curtain. <laughs> like <laughs> that is just even bringing him on this podcast when we first started it, he it, the first few he was dragging his heels and then after he did two he's like i'm done like he was done he didn't want to be on anymore and and then he started getting fans to the podcast <laughs> for him to we be want on. eddie <laughs> now i go places and people are like where's eddie like why That's not i actually true. wanted literally i was in austin and people are like well i actually wanted to meet eddie i was like oh okay <laughs> And the Doritos. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. No, All but, the snacks. But. but yeah, to your greater <laughs> point, like we would not be where we are today without the people supporting us. And, and 100%. And, and filling in, whether they're filling in those gaps that we're, uh, we're kind of lacking in our, mm -hmm. in our own acumen or skill set, but also just the encouragement and the belief. You mm -hmm. know, like I started off my film career doing a lot more like corporate or like business mm -hmm. videos and I had people who believed in me from day one, like my friends Colin and Brian, and, and gave me mm -hmm. gigs mm -hmm. and was able to like allow me to imagine a life of doing this full time. So it was, it, it you're so right about people. And I, I do think at times we're so, you know, the, the whole theme of this podcast is about believing in yourself and, and how you get to, how you get to that point. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you're a voice. And I'm, I hope 
sincerely that you have you're surrounding your people with more people like that just in general because that's what it takes you know and i i would not be where i am today and um and you would not be where you are today without all these the network of people that are in your corner and that believe in you that love you no matter what and to everyone out there who just like is not for whatever reason is afraid to take that first step into whatever your belief system is or it could be a career it could be running your first race it's like what are you doing mm-hmm. you know like get started mm-hmm. like sally we were just talking about this <laughs> the, the early days of the sally mccray podcast <laughs> and how the, the kind of the janky setup and yeah you know some of our first videos and <laughs> the jankiness oh of those God. and yeah. you know like but we all have an origin story we all start from yeah. some yep. place and you just have to like start the journey because like what the hell is life if it's Mm -hmm. not living it Mm -hmm. to your potential and living it authentically so yeah Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i mean i think some of the most powerful storytelling is about the story it's not about all the technical side of it and we like to always be improving i mean i look back at my own photos and i cringe sometimes you're just like oh my gosh i put that out in the world like (laughs) um but like that's cool because that means that i have evolved that means i have grown and if i was to look back and be like oh it's the same as it was like I think I'd be way more disappointed in that. And mm. so it's just part of being human. We're always going to be our own worst critics, but no one else is like looking at it with the lens of mm. criticism, right? right? Like they are inspired by the story, by you. They can see you doing that work. They can see it evolving. They see the backdrop changing, you know, like mm. that's part of the magic of watching someone really like grow into something. And I think mm-hmm. the biggest the biggest hurdle is our own like imposter syndrome, our own sense of yeah. like self-doubt. And I mean, I say it and I deal with it every day still. I know all of us do, right? Like it doesn't matter how big you get, the that follows you. And so I think just reminding yourself it doesn't have to be about perfection. It's not like, you know, anything I put out now, I could tell you 10 things that I still hate about it. But at some point you have to just put it out there and like, you know, like that's, I don't know, that's just being human. And I think we need to remember that, that it's it's not all glossy and it doesn't have to be if it's real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we talked about this on a previous pod. It was several podcasts back, but we hear it from the community a lot too, where people will respond to that topic, just like believing in yourself and just going for it. Um, and it's helped a, a lot of people that idea of, you have to be okay with failing. You have to be okay with it not being perfect. You have to be okay with just trying it without being able to see how it's going to end. I mean, we all want it to be laid out and want to see the finish line. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. not everything's a 100-meter sprint. You can you can see the finish line at the start line. And life just isn't like that. And fear so often, fear of critics, fear of failure, um, fear of just the feelings that come with not not achieving something, and I can say so many on everything that Eddie and I have done. I mean, we've hit points of failure, like, wow, that didn't work out or like, this isn't doing well. And now when, when you fail so much, you're like, oh, that's actually part of yeah, the journey. Like, right. That's actually how you get there. So if you see it as part of the journey is a normal part and that every person on the planet fails, then you don't fear it as much. It's not, I think failure, the word failure needs to be rebranded. Because yeah. it's just like, <laughs> right? it, it's about, it almost feels like a, a trail, you know, a network of trails and you just like veer off into the wrong path. Yeah. And you're like, oh, this is the wrong way. So you take a step mm-hmm. back and you get on the right path and you take a, it's just, you're, you're trying to find a path to the to the finish line or the the finish line that's not really there. But it is, I guarantee you the most successful people, the biggest winners, if you will, have failed the most mm-hmm. or have yes. ha- had the most step backs. But yeah. they're the ones willing to go to bat no matter what and get back uh, get back up and you know get back running or get back to that proverbial batter's box because they know that's what it takes. Mm-hmm. Like plain and simple, that's what it takes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I think the, the other thing that I really love about, I mean, you guys as creatives is – you your best work you have to put yourself out there that's the only way you get to your best work so you have to kind of be in that zone of discomfort quite a bit on the flip side of that is your work because it's art is always being critiqued 
Like that's like the business that you're in. It's like, subjective. Eddie, mm-hmm. like when you're yeah. a teacher, it's like he's not every day has critics. Like he has like seven year olds in his class. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, ask him to hold their hand on the way to the bathroom. You're like that's what. But for you guys, it's like you put out a film, you put out a picture, you put like you go and speak somewhere, you make an appearance, and it's like it's just a free for all. Well, okay, well, you're up front. That's your work. Well, I guess I get to type up and let you know what I think of it, even though I don't know all the work and heart that went into that, all the sweat and tears. But you have, you know, millions of people have access to what you do. And I think being creative, making that your job, something you're passionate about, it takes a lot of courage. Mm. It takes a lot of courage to create. Mm. And your best work is born of out of being authentic and, and being true to who you are and believing in, in, in the work of your hands. So I don't know if you guys want to expand a little bit on that. Well, I don't think people not will, easy. Yeah, yeah. People <laughs> kind of take for granted how quickly people move on too. like you think you think, oh, um, you know, I, I, I make a film and 99 percent of the comments are positive And then the one percent is negative or like critiquing mm-hmm. something. And yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Like, honestly, like, I'm a very much a free market guy, mm-hmm. and I'm very painfully aware that sometimes what we do is not for everyone. Yeah. And it's just, and that, and that's okay. But I guarantee that's you that That's a very mature not, statement, though, too, because mm-hmm. I, I feel like even there's people that will always struggle with that. They'll struggle with the two comments, yeah. the two critiques even though there's 645 wonderful, yeah. nice things. That but you have said. to have empathy for the person on the other side, too. Mm-hmm. I guarantee you they're not happy with something in their life. <laughs> something, yeah, <laughs> you're yes. right. Yep. And, and a lot of times, like, I'll, I'll literally picture just like, you know, some, <laughs> some nerd behind the keyboard who's, like, unwilling to, you know, take a step outside yeah. Yeah. and be active or, or something. You know, whatever the criticism is, uh, f- fair or unfair, most yeah. of the time it's unfair, but... Mm-hmm. You know, it is what it is. You're not going to, you're not going to bat a thousand. You just aren't. So um, it's, it, well, even when we were talking about with you, with your book, it's oh, like my son, like people forget. Too. Well, no, I not kids, that's different. My kids read the reviews. <laughs> but like I was telling her, like when, when the reviews started coming in for the book, it's like, even if you had a perfect product, like there's going to be someone that's going to critique it. Right. Yeah. Even if it's perfect. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. there's always something that someone's, well, there, I didn't they're like that part. Dude, it's what. perfect. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're going to bring, they're bring something up. Yeah. So I've it's gotten, just in them. I've gotten my fair share of very cruel reviews, but like you, Billy, that's kind of how I think I'm like, wow, if you, if you actually read my whole book, which is told from a child's perspective, that's yeah. the way that I wrote, I purposely wrote it as a child. And and all that you got from that was you're greatly disappointed in me. You're greatly disappointed in how I wrote it. Mm-hmm. I mean, several paragraphs. Hmm. That's you're, I'm going to sit down at the computer for everyone to read how disappointed and frustrated I am that the book didn't go in this direction. I, w- I thought it would be about this, and it wasn't. I mean, we've had I've had several comments where it's just, I'm so disappointed. Yeah. And Isaiah actually read me one the other day, and I told him, I was like, oh, I, I don't. I've actually, I stopped reading those comments a long time ago. Like when they first came out, came out, I was reading reviews and then I was like, oh, I need to stop reading reviews because <laughs> yeah. I would get like a hundred amazing ones and you get that one that's so cutting and so cruel. And you're yeah. like, you know, it starts off with, I love Sally, but I'm like, no, 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 that's actually the cute. <laughs> you actually don't like me. Yeah. Um, but I think like to your point, it is, you, you do have to put yourself in that person's shoes and realize like, wow, they, they're working through something. Yeah. Because anyone that I'm inspired by, people that are near and dear to me, um, people that I look up to, they never do stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like the, some of the worst critics, people have been those harshest to me. I'm like, that's fine. Cause I, I've never, there's nothing about you that like inspires me to live a better life. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I think that those that I look up to, the people that are my heroes, they're so busy working on their goals. They're so busy serving other people and loving other people. They don't have time to be frivolous and cut people Mm -hmm. down publicly. Yeah, you're productive and not destructive. Yeah. If you're you're of the latter world, then and that's if you where really you're just like I'm sorry you don't have something <laughs> that's yeah. Yeah. allowing you to have blinders on to the rest of the world and just yeah. like focus on making the world a better place and making your life a better yeah. existence mm-hmm. it's just you know yeah. it's, it's kind of par for course unfortunately but you know that's the world we live in mm-hmm. and yeah this whole social media uh, 
<laughs> thing is uh, it's something I always examine too because you're not going to change the platform you're just not no. you can change your relationship with it but you're just yes. not going to change yeah. the platform and that's something I'm constantly struggling with it's like yeah I'm, I'm living in this world we're all living this mm -hmm. time where you know the innermost thoughts of everyone you know like yeah. like minute by minute and you mm -hmm. get yeah. fed all this information you're just like mm -hmm. all right I'm are, are our brains wired to process all this or yeah. can we just like take a step back and mm. be like all right let's just step away from the rat race for a little bit yeah. yeah i think this you're you're right i think i'm hoping that maybe somewhere down the road that there's a shift in how people engage and believe in in social media because as much as we all say like it's filtered most of what you see isn't real it's true you're looking at a glimpse a split second something that's been curated and planned to be posted for you to view. Yeah. A lot of times it's for the purpose of FOMO, like it's in order to get you to buy something or to get on a, a, a political bandwagon. I mean, there's it's yeah. it's there for a reason that isn't always have you personally in your best interest. But I think the reminder of guess what? It is just, it is a device that's in your hand that you can set down and push away and go live in the moment in the real world. Like get back into the world, get back in talking to people face to face. And, you know, I, I think that's what's so great about the Child and Ultra community, right? Like we talk, we have the best conversations for hours yeah. uninterrupted and we realize, oh my gosh, I needed that. Why did I come back feeling so amazing? You know, after running and talking. Because your phone's a away. Your yeah, you're out of coverage. Time, you don't even and have that, cell reception. And that's real life though. Yeah. You're mm -hmm. like, we had a real life conversation and I was able to work through some of my insecurities or hardships or stuff that I was going through and not have to compare it to some fake stuff online. You know, it isn't going away. I think a lot of people, their livelihood is through technology and marketing and media. I mean, so much of what we put out, you know, businesses depend on it, but it doesn't matter if it's a child or a grown adult. People do struggle, you know, with, with the effects of, of social media. But I think going back to what I was saying originally, it takes so much courage to be creative and put out stuff that you that's true to you and isn't so much, okay, what's the algorithm? Yeah, and Billy, <laughs> Billy reminds me of that too because like, he's much more established on YouTube than I am and that's something I'm kind of trying to grow, but sometimes you put so much love into something and you really are proud of it mm -hmm. and then it doesn't go anywhere. For whatever reason, the algorithms don't pick it up. You're not yeah. playing the game right. Um, and that can be really hard. Like, there's no negative comments, but it's personally demoralizing. And mm. it, for me, something that I'm learning to detach myself from is the reaction that it gets. Like, you know, I think it's a bad combo for me to put something out there and then expect that I'm going to get all this, like, in mm -hmm. return. And so that's sort of an interesting thing. And I think Billy's good at just giving me that perspective of, like, you just have to be consistent with putting it out there, know what you want to say, but not be doing it because you're expecting a certain sort of reaction. And that's that's a little bit hard, right? Like, I think we kind of need that affirmation of like, oh, I did great. Everyone loved it. It was so amazing. And then mm -hmm. how can I get better? How can I do even better next time? And we're almost trying to like one up everything we do. And so to just have faith that what you're putting out there is valuable and it doesn't matter if like 10 people or 10,000 people see it, like it's still valuable. And I think that's something that, yeah, when you're putting out personal content, that can be hard to disassociate. Well, again, mm -hmm. like I'm a free market guy, so I'm just like, all right, it wasn't good enough, you know? Like I would, or the I, algorithm sucked. Yeah, <laughs> that too. It could be either, I, but yeah, I mean, sometimes it is. Yeah, that's a bit of a cop out. Come on, like, <laughs> like it's easy to blame it on something else, but it's just like you're empowered to like make the next one better, like make it more engaging, and and uh, you know, like play the game better even mm -hmm. as as yeah. cheap as that may sound it, it you know if that's the domain you're working in you need the more yeah you, know, the more you do see the algorithm <laughs> with someone so random doing something so lame and it gets like yeah four million totally views. you're like really all you did was was pick up the apple eat it and do a cartwheel and it's viral are like, you tempted to make like the most clickbaity titles ever like yeah. i eat an apple <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah but and then I, I, someone else that has beautiful drone footage of you know you running up the side of a mountain and it's like cool a hundred views yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah like wait this was like so beautifully done but like the guy doing the cartwheel yeah yeah algorithms I, I are just, weird they they want you to operate the way they want you to and so i think staying true to yourself being authentic is like no i'm gonna do what i want to do 
and not what is going to get the clicks. But I, that is hard when you're trying to also make a living out of it. You're trying yeah. to make a business out of it. But I think you guys are a great example of, like Billy said, this isn't overnight growth. This is a lot of years of putting in those years. reps, right? Yeah. And I think now you can look back on all that and be like, we did build something that we believed in, even when it was only 10 people. And now it's like it's grown authentically because all these people are like, they're still speaking their truth. They're still doing it. And um, and that is like really admirable that you haven't lost that. Yeah, that's why lost it's that. happier. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's easy for me to be happier for somebody like Sally than somebody who achieved like overnight success. Got one viral and, yeah. video and mm. all of a yeah. sudden they're like, yeah. you know. Because <laughs> I know, I, like I've seen the the bottom of that iceberg and all the work yeah. that you've put into it to make this a thing. So yeah, I mean, the fact that it's grown the way it has in the last couple of years is not surprising to me one bit. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we're we're just waiting for. I mean, I know I've brought this up so many times, but I'm just waiting for the Billy and Hillary podcast to, <laughs> yeah. to sprout up. Billy, I know you were doing the Billy Yang podcast for a while. Yeah, I get asked all the time. Is is you don't Billy get asked it? all the time? I do. No, I do. I do get asked all the time because people ask me about you. I'm like, all right. Billy's family, but okay. I don't know where he is or why he's not here. Why he's not doing that? Stop asking me. But um. What what do you love creating right now? Is it podcasts? Is it film documentaries? Like, is it speaking? You're a great speaker. I mean, there's you really do have so many areas you can go in. Maybe that's the trouble. Uh, you know, I had that conversation one time before. Yeah. It's like when you're able to do a lot, sometimes it is hard to narrow down and focus on one thing hmm. when you love a lot of uh, things and you are good at them. Yeah, my and certainly my. Uh, creative ADHD doesn't help. <laughs> but no I, comment. I feel you. I feel no you. comment, Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess I, I, I'm I, sort of resentful of having to fill in a calendar. I, and I know consistency is like such a huge part of like playing the algorithm when it comes to podcasts, when it comes to video. I really have to feel connected to the work for mm-hmm. it to be for it to be something and I put way too much pressure on myself for each creative piece to be to mean something beyond just like okay I filled in this week's video or this Mm. week's podcast kind of thing but that was what I was struggling with I can certainly speak to the podcast side of things where Mm -hmm. uh, currently it's on hold because I got a little disenfranchised and tired of the rat race of like finding the most relevant person to talk mm-hmm. to every week in and week out, which is what I love about your mm-hmm. current, I guess, uh, you know, format. format of just, yeah, like, this week could be nothing. It could be talking about uh, my travel to Austin or, or this race or that race or what I have to look forward to or um, engaging with the community. Like it could be so many different things. And you're, it's not, I'm sure you give your heart and soul into each and every episode and because that's what speaks to you. But for me, I started to lose my way a little bit and didn't really care about the person on the other end because I just thought, oh, that's that person just won a race or they did this incredible feat, so I should talk to them. Hmm. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Like, it's, it's something that, um, you know, Hillary and I talk about now because I'm very thankful to have a creative a fellow creative partner Mm -hmm. who I can bounce ideas back and forth with. And that's been a huge godsend. It's just my creative life prior to that was very, very much like, I hope it's good. And, and I'm going to put it out to the (laughs) world and and hopefully it'll Mm -hmm. resonate with them. But now I have like a strong, you know, pretty strong sounding board. Yeah, which is amazing. Like, I mean, you guys know you're making all the stuff and then often the first people to see it are going to be your critics for better or worse. Mm -hmm. And that's very vulnerable. And so I think for both of us, it's now like feels really nice to have that constant conversation. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, it is something we've talked about a lot. And I I really love that Billy is very true to what feels right for him. And almost to a fault sometimes. Almost to a fault. I wasn't going to say that (laughs) (laughs) since you mentioned it. No. (laughs) Um, no, this is why I hate small talk. It's just like <laughs> yeah. we could be having such a more meaningful conversation like we are now. Like, yeah. why does it take running on trails in the middle of the night or sitting down in front of microphones to have a, a, a <laughs> yeah. meaningful engagement? You know, like it's yeah. just I don't know. I I guess I 
I, I just hate dealing with any kind of BS. Yeah. That, that doesn't... Well, I think that that has always been a strength. Like you, you're going to mm. do what you love and what you're pulled by. And I think that is like for a lot of people listening, um, you know, not everyone feels like that they have the freedom to do that. You know, there's some people listening, they, they work two jobs, they got four kids. They don't like either of their jobs and but they're paying the bills. And so there is a wrestling, I think, for all of us, like in our journey where we feel like how much of my life is like working and doing stuff that I don't like and I'm exhausted and tired and trying to make ends meet. Yeah. And then where is the space where I'm really going to do what I love? Where, uh, where do I step out and just, like, yeah. go for it? Yeah, you're not going like? to get any kind of, like, David Goggins, rah-rah, like, I hate running, <laughs> so I do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do it. I show up each and every time. And, like, that's just not going to be me. I know I know. in my heart, like, I, and my audience probably knows this. Like, you know, when I'm in the middle of 100, I'm working on my latest 100-mile film. Like, it's not – you're not going to walk away from this going, like, oh, man, like – this he made that like, look easy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a struggle for me. It is. Um, but it, that's like, real. I think most of us, we, we know what it is to struggle. We understand what it is. We understand what it is to have doubt. It is a renewing every day where we have to remind ourselves, like, what I'm doing matters. I, I can do this. Like, I believe in this. The work is worth it. I mean, that's every single day yeah. we have to remind ourselves of that. I mean, that's why inspirational quotes and motivational books, th- those will will never be out of those things. Those will be pumped out by the hundreds every single year because everyone is always looking for the next thing that's going to help them keep moving on in life. Like what's going to get me excited yeah. again? You know what's fascinating yeah. about our sport is that <laughs> And I'm sure you get a ton of these comments too when they watch like on YouTube. Yeah. A lot of the comments would be like, thank you for this video. Now I'm inspired to run. Or like before race, I watch your video to inspire me to race. I know you get that all the time. Like it's nonstop. Your videos are very inspiring. Yeah. If you're... (laughs) Like I don't, I don't need inspiration to sit down to like a nice steak dinner or have a giant piece of cake in front of me. Like I genuinely love that. But with running, we have this like this weird love hate relationship where we need that initial, like that motivation to get you moving. Mm-hmm. And the reminder it'll be worth it. Yeah, yeah. the reminder yeah. that mood follows action mm-hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's. I love that about running, too, because it's not always easy. You have moments that are easy when you're out there. Like, I mean, Eddie, you're training for a marathon right now, right? Some mm-hmm. days. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. Let's, yeah, let's get into that. I know we're all going to be out there for that because you guys are yeah. 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 yeah, we do. We're okay. going to be running around. Yeah. But, like, you have some days where it flows and it is easy and you're meditative and you're in the zen. And then you have other days where it's like, I've never been so slow. I've never been so, like, all these things. It's like yeah, running three miles is do. exhausting. Yeah. And, you're, and so... I think that's what makes me come back to it over and over again is that I never know what version of Hillary is going to show up. Mm. And that's kind of satisfying and interesting when you do have those days where everything clicks. Um, And, you know, like if it was just easy all the time, I think it would be boring. And so that is sort of the struggle and the the reward of it is that it's the sport where we have these incredible highs and moments of like joy and life and then we have these like like in the grand slam you had the lowest of lows <laughs> a lot of lows a lot of lot of blisters a lot of lows so eddie where's your enjoyment <laughs> meter yeah exactly running? how is do you feel fun, about running not fun? somewhere in the middle it is uh right now it's not fun i'm not gonna lie it's yeah. been uh so what's your why like why are you running on uh, 26, you can't say because Sally's making Sally, it. Sally, no, yeah. Because <laughs> it's good content. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all for the tube. It's all, yeah. No, I think for, I wanted to be, consi- I like need to be consistent in, yeah. like, you see, exercising. You, you strike me like a hard hat. Like, yeah, I need to, to work. yeah, yes. I, I do yeah. need to. That's the McCray men. Yeah. yeah. They are all like that. Yeah. It's. And for what it's worth, yeah. like. You know, knowing I got to run 26 miles, which I've never done in, you know, X amount of days has really gotten me out to, You're to be consistent. You're running scared. So, yeah. yeah, I'm like. You have a goal. I have a goal right. and that's. You, I've, you know you have work to do. So yeah. You just do the work. Yeah. C- yeah. Trying to do what I Hold can. On, where's and where's my camera? And, uh, <laughs> where's something that is. <laughs> 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 you did hammer out a 20 miler. 
Yeah. And so I'm like, you did 20, like... Are, are you running with him? Like, no. no, she's I, not. Right. I don't. I mean, I can't believe he even let me coach him. Yeah. At first, I, I said, I will never coach you. You're well, not the coaching was like, what what should I do today? That's... Go Training run time, this. Right? Yeah, it was, yeah. It was kind of that. He got a month in and got like a nerve and back injury. Yeah. So it is... I have to train him day, it's day to a daily. day, like yeah. really like weigh out how he's feeling. And it's been amazing. I mean, he's gotten fitter and faster and like through, he's been uncomfortable every day. Yeah. So it's been really interesting because I was like, dude, let's just choose a different one. He's like, no, I'm doing this one. Yeah. And his, his idea too is just like, I, I made a goal. I'm sticking to it. And a big part I, of it is this was Sally's first marathon was to LA. Hmm. So I'm going to beat her time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and he is. That's was it goal. yours too? It was mine. Yeah, I know. Wait, what year? Did I? Do I know this about you? I th- <laughs> yeah, I we, just... we talked about it, but you, I think you were like four years later. I was 2001. 2001 or two, yeah. Oh, yeah. man. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, what was your time? Can we say? 430. Sally, I can Google 429. 429. Okay. And I had. I got work to do. <laughs> I, I mean, I was shattered. And I was a yeah. high school teacher at the time, and I taught on the second story. I mean, I couldn't walk downstairs without cringing and like, oh, yeah. for maybe two weeks. Yeah. But I loved, I was like, dude, I'm going to do You're that hooked. again. No, this, like, let me I had t- no idea what Eddie, I was my doing. time was 4.58, so four fifty eight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Humble beginnings. Yeah. He is fiercely competitive in everything with the kids. Like even with our kids, he's so competitive. He's yeah. very competitive. He's more, he's the most competitive in our house. Yeah. Maybe make, I don't know. Mackenzie might be too. I'm not the most competitive in our house. Like That's shocking because you are. I'm very competitive. Yeah. But this guy, I mean, when he was an elementary school teacher, he would go out at lunchtime and like dunk on kids playing basketball. Yeah. And then he'd be like, yeah, let's start playing a up. game. You oh, do. yeah, he you was. He would tell me, he's like, yeah, I'm not letting them beat me. And no. I was like, they're in fifth grade. Like, what are you? <laughs> Give them a break. But that, that is him through and through. So... He will make sure that he beats my that's time. That's my goal. In yeah. LA. That's, yeah. that's hey, my motivation why. Motivation <laughs> comes in all shapes and forms. That's right. yeah. yeah, that can be a good. That's cat. it. Yep. That's but that's it. what's kept him actually active his whole life too. He has to always be working toward a goal. So yeah. He loves to lift, and then the running. He was a soccer player. We were both soccer players in college, so that's just always been a part of his life. So he's more like three to six miles. Is that's what keeps him happy, and then he's like, "Oh, I'll do," and he's done a ton of half an extra times. twenty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, now he's like, I don't know, if I like just the running, but yeah, he's. It's a cool thing to just like tick off and to to do, yeah, you know, like I you don't ever so. have to do it again if you hate it. Yeah, yeah. Literally you, what he said. Yeah, yeah that's literally, <laughs> yeah. literally my thought exactly. <laughs> that's your mantra. <laughs> one and yeah. done. One and done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you want some advice? <laughs> yes, let's I hear. Mean, you're at a table with like. All I, I do, yes, runners. let's hear it. I'll take, I'll take all the advice. This episode is brought to you by Gooder. Gooder makes $25 active sunglasses that don't slip, don't bounce, and are 100% polarized. If you want to support the show and pick up a pair, Gooder is giving Choose Strong podcast listeners free shipping on your first order. You can go to gooder.com backslash Sally and use code Sally to get free shipping. Gooder offers a 30-day money-back guarantee and 100% satisfaction. Find your pair at gooder.com backslash Sally and use code S-A-L-L-Y to get free shipping. I just remember this about my first marathon is that I fully allowed myself to be present. Mm. And that's, I know, I know that sounds like very basic advice, but I don't know very many times where you're doing a task and you're focused for that long. And for me, it was like, I allowed myself to walk through the water stops, but Mm -hmm. everything else I was going to run. It wasn't very fast, but I ran every step and I was just like locked in, locked in because you'll never get that first experience ever again. Yeah. And so I remember more details about my first marathon, even though it was a decade plus ago now, because I was just like, yeah, I'm never going to get this again. You know, I, I would, it's, if I was a sports star, it, would, it was what I would imagine being like my first Super Bowl experience or my first mm-hmm. NBA finals. It was just like, I am just going to lock in. I don't, I don't care about people who are faster than me, who are done already. You know, it was like 
humble braggers who start walking back on the yeah yeah like, <laughs> you can trip and him. you're at mile yeah. 16 <laughs> yeah like i don't care about any of that yeah. i'm just yeah. gonna have my own experience and my own day and it was a blast that's yeah. such mm. great advice yeah that is I, yeah. I remember my first marathon so well so vividly over 20 years ago yeah. and you're right it's and la especially is a great stage for your first marathon don't mm. you think i mean the, the energy yeah uh, mostly a point to point and yeah. also I just remember because my first half marathon was a month before my first full marathon mm. and I remember just that daunting feeling of oh I got to do this twice yeah you know but then what, on the day of my marathon this first 13.1 miles flew by I remember running by the 13.1 <laughs> sign like, oh man there you go. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I like I'm still standing okay yeah Let's yeah. Do this. yeah yeah what was your longest run in training before? I think it was like 16 miles or something okay. like that. And I just felt like a superhero. I, I told yeah. everybody who would be willing to listen. <laughs> I just ran 16 miles. No big deal. Uh, <laughs> no big deal. And they're like, the sir, line, I just want to take line? your Burger King order. <laughs> <laughs> Burger King, that's what it was. I'm like, I know this story. No, Carl Jr. actually. Carl Jr. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another oh. thing I always tell people uh, who are about to run their first marathon is like, 13.1 miles actually isn't the halfway point. It's mile 20. Dude, like, that's like, so like, true. Like, yeah. that's and then the, so the, the last 10K is like, oh, I got to <laughs> I gotta like get my big boy pants Dig on deep, and yeah. Dig deep, yeah. yeah. What about you guys? Yeah. That, no, first, I, I first totally agree that advice? the last 10K is the hardest. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, even the people racing at front, I mean, that's like when the race starts. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like pretty much the last 10K is like, all right, yeah. you, you run a hunt 20 miles to race a 10K mm -hmm. is kind of the way it goes. But and we expect see to that. see you sprinting that <laughs> last 10K. Oh, it's, it's wild. I love, <laughs> I love watching the pro road marathoners. I mean, you are just like. That's a different mental game. Like from even. So much pain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. From their, trail running, it's so different. Your capacity for pain in. is un, like, it's, it's pretty cool. But. Yeah, I, I think, um, how many road marathons have you done? I haven't done a ton. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Zero. you just done ultras. What do you know about so, racing? Really? Oh. A marathon oh my for God. Hillary is just a training day. So yeah. It's kind of funny. <laughs> I did a couple half road marathons when I first got into running, and then I got exposed to trail running. Oh, okay. And someone, it was Gary Robbins, Squamish oh, 50K, 2013. Awesome. Yeah, he was my coach for a while. I love Oh, that's love right. Gary. I remember you saying that. I was one that. of his guinea pigs, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, there was like, it wasn't a lottery yet. It, you know, like yeah. all these races were just like open season. Yeah. And I signed up two weeks before because someone made this comment of like, oh, you could never run that far. And I was like, oh, watch me. You, know? yeah. <laughs> you don't know how competitive I am. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, and like I did so much stupid crap. Like I put leather insoles in my runners the night before the race because I had some plantar fasciitis. And I was like, this way I can put them in my dress shoes and I'll get double purpose out of them. <laughs> and I was God. like, so I ran the whole race with these like leather Dr. Scholl's insoles in my shoes. I got blisters the size oh. of like oh, sand oh dollars on the insides of my feet. That's and when I you did, want to try something new. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Didn't, I, didn't, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know you were allowed to eat. I didn't know that that was like a good idea. So I did the whole 50K without eating, which was like <laughs> nine and a half hours for oh. me. Oh <laughs> my God. Um, you and Gary didn't talk about this? No, but he wasn't my coach yet. He became my coach after oh, that. When God. I realized yeah. I had You're a You're like, I need a coach learn. now, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh my God. Say, Gary, you are. Yeah. No, <laughs> I, I have to say my, it got a lot better from there. That was, I started on a real low and I went up from there, yeah. but you know, I will give you my mantra, which I still use today, which is just like, I get to do this. I don't have mm. to do this. And I think that attitude of being present, that attitude of gratitude, that's what got me through that race. All these races is just mm -hmm. like, not everybody gets to do this. Like yeah. I've had times in my life where I couldn't run like I do now. Um, my little sister was really sick growing up. I, she has never been able to do stuff like this. Like mm. I've had people in my life to remind me that it's not a right, it's a privilege. And I think yeah. that's just like, it, it's humbling. And it's like, these are experiences, like whether you choose to run one again or not, like you don't have to, you get to kind of figure that out after and you don't make that decision right after you finish yeah. the race. Yeah. Yeah. Wait a few days. Most people <laughs> do. Yeah. They You'll find it. yourself <laughs> signing up for something. Yeah. <laughs> so um, but you will learn something and mm -hmm. you get to have that experience and that's such a unique gift. You yeah. Know? So yeah. I think the more that you can, and this applies to the ultra running too, Sally, I think a huge part of it is how you choose to view it. Like, do you choose to view the suffering as 
like I'm a victim of the suffering and oh my gosh, all this is happening to me and I'm feeling all of it. Or do you look at it as like, this is the opportunity to learn something about myself through the suffering. And like, to me, that's the beautiful part of all of this stuff. Mm. It's like, that's why we're doing it is I'm a way different human today than I would have been. I don't think I could have had this career, like being brave enough to go out on my own and do all these things if I hadn't learned what I'm capable of mm -hmm. through suffering. And I think that's that's a gift. Dylan, so. that's yep. the yeah, breakaway yeah. video, by yeah, the way. Yeah. 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 And you talk about being nervous about public speaking. Like you're a better, you're hundred percent. Oh, I'm so nervous. I sweat from my arms the whole thing. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. That's why I'm wearing a tank top right yeah. now. So um, no, both of you guys are very By the way, very well spoken. How right. amazing is the McRae Yang eight like cheer station gonna be on the LA Marathon course? We're oh my gosh. You, you <laughs> yeah. have no idea. We have to like, crank, crank my music up. <laughs> Like outfits and yes. you know, I'm I'm, I'm uh. super excited for him. I might cry. What? Yeah. Just because this has been I don't know. When he first started doing it, we were like so excited. I had high hopes, like we were gonna share a lot of his training. Like this was gonna be something that he had always said, like, I don't have any interest, so I'm not gonna do it. And then he's like, I'm gonna do it. And then he got hurt. Yeah. And it was like but I, I feel like as he's shared that on the podcast, his journey of like still moving forward because he's not further in that's not this it's not like he's running on a broken leg like that's different mm -hmm. um it's but it's like, not linear right like it's no like he's gotten he's he's gotten, gotten better. better like seeing chiropractor different things but it's like it doesn't matter what you do like you can choose to run it's not going to change it yeah. you can choose to sit around it's not going to change it so he's like all right i'll choose to run mm -hmm. and so he's just choosing to be uncomfortable like every step of the way so um I've just been really encouraged in that because I know there's a lot of people who live in chronic pain mm -hmm. and live mm -hmm. with, you know, chronic yeah. stuff that they, they have to choose to get out of bed and go to work and take care of kids in that. And it's it's really difficult. So this is on a much smaller, tinier scale. Um, you know, I'm hoping that it'll eventually be resolved but it's just yeah it's been really raw i think yeah. watching him build up to it but also this is the most consistent he's been in running in his whole life like because yeah. he's always been training for like soccer or like he loves to lift so he's usually always lifting but you know he'll he's the guy that'll go run a 145 half marathon and run like six times before the race like <laughs> That's pretty much. Kind of hate been. that guy, Eddie. <laughs> I know. <laughs> not fair. Yeah, not fair. But now he's he's trying to do it right. And, yeah. Um, yeah. I think also one last. Yeah. One last thing. When the mics are off, remind me to show you my Gatorade bottle and trash bag trick Ooh. for the start line. Oh, Billy, yeah. right. we should really put this photo the up life on the hack? podcast. Yeah. Is this to go to the bathroom? Yes. Yeah. 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 No, but also good. the All photo right. of Billy in his garbage bag with his like inside out sweatband. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gotta see that. <laughs> my chubby face. Well, LA, there's so many people at the start line. Yeah, like yeah, sure. you could be standing there for a long time, and all those electrolytes. No, you always green, see you like, always see the people watering the bushes at Dodger Stadium. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm like. Yeah, I got, you I got mine gotta, in like five yeah. seconds before the start line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the lines are super long, and yeah. All right, let's, I need these tips. Yeah, hot tips. Like, what? Yeah. I need to figure it out, though. Maybe we'll make a video. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw some Gatorade bottles back there. Right. Well, we have a full day planned. To our listeners, we have, a, I mean, I coined it as, like, the creative collective <laughs> hangout day. We have Mostly Tyler, food and yeah, snacks. Tyler, Mostly food, Tyler yeah. and Sarah and Steven are also here. Um, we're missing Drew Darby, who's on another project right now. But we have a full day planned. We're going to go on a bike ride on the coast right now. We are going to go have lunch um, at one of my local sponsors' sessions. We'll probably hit the coast again for some sunset picture takings. We have all these amazing yeah. creatives, and they brought their cameras. So you got to get the sunset. By the way, I'm super jealous about the, the session sponsor. Oh, we need to talk about it. Because yeah, I, I mean, think in L.A., the only thing you, I've there been, are so many great places in the L.A. Only get yourself thing, The only kind of sponsorship I would take is from a restaurant. It's, or yeah. like, something it's food related. The, we literally walk in. And, and today, they just released the oh, sandwich. Yes. So they have named a sandwich after me. What? Oh, get out of here. Really? Come on, man. It's called the Ultra. Called the what? Ultra. Yeah. Okay, what's in it? What's in the sandwich? It's this it's chicken like, saute. It's like stuff. a chicken saute. It the flavor is at sessions and everything. It's very flavorful, yeah. Okay, the crispy Brussels sprouts. 
Okay. Money. Mm, Money. Yeah. I can eat the whole bowl. But this has, um, yeah, it's a chicken sandwich. There's a little bit of breading on the outside. Is there a yeah, yeah, yeah. On it? yeah, there's a little like bit of Like some cabbage and peanut Thai sauce. Sauce, yep. And yep. I don't know. The way it's presented is beautiful. Cucumber. You can, you can see it on their Instagram. I just shared yeah. it. But, um, but anyway, Yum. after we, we have some good food, we, we're going to go maybe do a run walk on the coast, take some pictures. All of this is going to be a YouTube episode. So we invite you guys to watch our day, um, how it unfolds. My hope um, for this year is to really just push out this incredible team that has helped me build over the years to highlight um, my incredible friends. If people work closely with me, they're probably also some of my best friends because the stuff that we do requires a lot of trust. Um, especially because I'm sharing my life, my family, very personal stories. And the best content is when I'm being the most vulnerable. And so um, the people you'll see in this YouTube film are people that are near and dear to my heart that I love, like Billy and Hillary, um, who are pretty much like family to me. So um, we invite you to watch the YouTube. Thank you so much for showing up today and listening to the podcast. Thank you for showing up to your training today and putting in the work. We are so proud of you. Um, Billy and Hillary, where can everyone follow you? Because if you have not followed Billy and Hillary yet, you need to. Their content is incredible. But Hillary, where can people find you? Oh, man. Um, well, first of all, thank you guys so much for having us on. This yes. has been amazing. Yeah. We love you both. <laughs> Very excited for Marathon Eddie. Just excited for the year. So, um, <laughs> And all our secret projects we're allowed to talk I about. I know. Yet. There are so <laughs> many things. I know. <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah, it will probably not be the last time that you hear from us. Uh, but no. it's going to be a great year. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at the Hillary Ann or on YouTube, Hillary Ann. And that's, that's about it. Website? Website, thehillaryann.com. It's all. It's easy. It's easy. It's yeah. Easy. So is Ann your middle name. Yeah. I'm kidding. I know. I know. <laughs> Shocker. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'll put all that in the description notes. And then. Thanks, Sally. Um, I know you have such an exciting year. I want to encourage people. Um, follow along in Hillary's journey. I know you're starting to document a little bit more of your journey and things that you are really stepping out and encouraged to try, do new things. And I, I just love that about you. I know you have a lot of new projects on the horizon. And so are you putting that all on YouTube or is Instagram the best way to follow that? I think, well, YouTube is the goal uh, right now. More on Instagram. I Right now I feel like I'm sort of positioning everything to springboard yeah. into the year. But but yeah, this year is really about creating Creating things that I'm proud of, that I'm invested in, like personal stories, either mine or just everyone around me, yeah. you, like all of that. So it's going to be a really cool year. I feel like I've done a lot of behind the lens and this is yes. a little bit more vulnerable because yeah. it's a bit more in front of the lens. So yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Who knows? We will see as it comes out. That's a beautiful thing. It's like well, it's constantly evolving, but everything I'm excited. Everything yeah. beautiful. Thanks, yeah. Abby. <laughs> Billy, how can people follow you? Do you want to announce anything that you're launching or? Um, LARunner.com. <laughs> That's, blog. That's okay. a joke. That's it's actually joke. still up there. Good. Uh, yeah, it. at Billy Yang on most channels, Instagram, yeah. Strava, YouTube. And, uh, Do you want to talk about the Dolomites? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I am. yes. This is exciting. This is a, it was like one of the highlights of last year was getting yes. to like not only run but host a uh, multi-day trek around the Tour de Mont Blanc last year, the week before UTMB, and I'm, I'm, I get to do that again this year, although I believe nice. that one is sold out. But um, I did open up a Dolomites one, a multi-day trek in the Italy. Dolomites mm -hmm. through uh, Vagabond Trails, a place that I've been nice. really, really looking forward to visiting. Oh, the food. And, and yeah, for the food and the language and the culture, all oh. of it. So uh, excited about that. If you want to join me and make some lifelong friends, vagabondtrails.com or vagabond-trails.com and uh, look for my name, Billy Yang. But yeah, otherwise, just uh, another year of, of uh, adventures and curveballs and, uh, you know, just like... <laughs> Crazy things that have uh, have come about that I haven't really expected, but um, yeah, the ambition is to continue to tell more stories and uh, about yours truly and about others and Western States broadcasts. I'll be spearheading that again, and 
Yeah, everything's happening. Love trails this summer. In Wales. In yeah. Wales mm-hmm. and cool. the Mammoth Trail Fest. Some ideas percolating around yeah. there. So. <laughs> we have a couple big projects. I'm excited. Yeah. We'll expose those later on. I know there's going to be a lot of intertwining this year with yeah. the Yangs. Um, Bill, I do want to highlight just really quick that the camp that you are doing, like the Dolomites, I don't even know if I would call it a camp as much as it's an amazing, beautiful adventure. Those are typically like 10, 12 people. Because I feel like last yep. year, when I, I met up with you guys when you finished. I remember oh, yeah, you that's ran right. into the mountains to surprise them. And I had just arrived like the day before. And I knew that you guys were coming down. You were doing the big UTMB loop. Yeah. But I just felt like you were best friends with everyone that was with you. And you are such a real, personable, such an approachable person. Everyone had amazing things to say about that experience so do you keep it small on purpose because of that or no i think it's just uh, limited to uh permits and whatnot and okay. you know you stay in these huts but yeah i a hundred percent like with these adventures i feel like yeah i mean and they're not they're not cheap by any means um mm-hmm. so it can't be for it everyone unfortunately but it's a, a true adventure i mean yeah but they get the all ma- the logistics the most, are yeah. taken care of they mm-hmm. they shuttle your bag from hut to hut but it's really about more about just being immersed in this this week-long adventure with like-minded people creating memories like for me things like that you know i i resonate with you when you talk about community a lot because mm-hmm. that is the foundational heart and soul and heartbeat of our sport that's Mm -hmm. what makes it special especially in north america i'm sorry to all the europeans or people in asia (laughs) out there but i do believe that because it's so small in north america Mm -hmm. uh, mostly due to limitations due to you know permitting whatnot but that is what makes it kind of special at the in the same token like you're no one's going to make a a ton of money because you can't Mm -hmm. bring in three thousand people Mm -hmm. to the start line but it's all the more reason why it feels intimate and special and you get to connect with more people. So, um, cool. yeah, well, you're, you're getting my endorsement here. I know you didn't ask me to say this, but, um, you really are an incredible host and I know that you absolutely love, you do, you love what you do. You yeah. love being out in the mountains. I've been out in the mountains enough with you, but, um, I knew the group with you're with, I mean, I would have thought that everyone that was out there with you was your best friend. So, yeah. <laughs> and I think that's the best part of the adventure is people want to feel included and like, it isn't. So do people have to have like a certain fitness level? I mean, this isn't a hike. It's like a no, hike yeah, run, you should like be, a run uh, hike. Yeah. But, uh, you thing. know, we did cater to a lot of people of different yeah. abilities. So, yeah, I think as long as you, much like Eddie, you see this as an objective and you train in earnest for it, yeah, then you're going to have the best time because yeah. uh, the miles are going to come easy. Yeah. Billy did a video on YouTube for the Tour de Mont Blanc one, so that's a good... Check that out. Yeah, on yeah, yeah. Nice. yeah. Stupid face when you surprised me. <laughs> that's the <laughs> I mean, best. Spoiler, but that was yeah. seriously the best. <laughs> It's Billy wasn't expecting Hillary Hillary to come to Europe and I showed up on top of the last peak of the UTMB yeah. circuit and yeah I think he just about fell over he was yeah. so surprised it was yep. a good surprise That's awesome. knocked me over with the feather yeah, yeah. it was Ooh. the best pick it was so good it was so pure. I remember I ran into you in town right before I, I, was, I was like don't tell Billy I'm yeah. here yeah. it was so it good was pretty funny but yeah, yeah, no, I mean, we're definitely excited about that. I think any chance you have to just like connect with people on a more intimate level, like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. you know, it's such a beautiful place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Like that's yeah. the best of all worlds. So yeah. And speaking yeah. of thanks for having us on your podcast, yeah. Like, yeah. like being able to sit down and do nothing but talk to one another I is know. always special. Yep. This is yeah. well, this is our favorite style. Mm-hmm. Um, it's and our favorite way to invite the community in. They're just sitting here at the table with us, hanging out as friends. And so we just want to go ahead and wrap up in that way and say thank you to everyone that's listening. Thank you for joining us at the table. Um, We appreciate you. We love you. We hope you have a wonderful week. And we encourage you to keep choosing strong in all that you do.